the WWE can mirror the U.S. sporting culture in certain ways. One of those ways, to me, is in the debates about who's the biggest star, who drew the most money, who was the best wrestler, who was the best talker. Would this person from this generation have made it now? Would this person from now have made it back then? We're talking about all that stuff. Just like with American sports, you talk about, you know, who's the best quarterback of all time or who's the best running back of all time or who's the best team of all time. Same thing in basketball, best player, best team. We talk about the Hall of Fame and players that aren't in that should be, the best that ever were, maybe guys that are in the Hall of Fame that shouldn't be, all of that type of stuff. And every year when it comes to the WWE, as we start getting into WrestleMania territory, we start focusing on, as a lot of wrestling fans do, uh, the yearly announcement for the WWE's Hall of Fame class. You know, in terms of recent history, especially post-Attitude Era history, it's one of the best pieces of business the WWE has done. It's an addition and a very welcome and a beneficial addition to the WrestleMania weekend experience to where it becomes kind of its own event within the big event. I mean, it was really, really well done by the WWE. I give them a lot of credit for this. It'd be nice if they actually constructed a physical Hall of Fame someday, like you know, they've talked before about Orlando, Florida, where WrestleMania 33 is going to be. But at the end of the day, they've done a really, really good job of working this into being a really big deal. When at the end of the day, there is no physical Hall of Fame. So it's all on like paper and in the digital space, this Hall of Fame. But we talk about it, we make big deals about it, we get pissed off because people are inducted, we get pissed off because people still aren't inducted. It's crazy how that works. But it is what it is. We love professional wrestling, and always love WWE or the product in general uh, across the board, but there's still a deep-seated love for professional wrestling and a love for talking about uh, the past, the love of talking about legends, a lot of times talking about how good things used to be compared to what they are now, so on and so forth. So I'm kind of throwing my hat into the ring a little bit. It's that yearly uh, video talking about who I think should be or will be in the upcoming WWE Hall of Fame class. Now, the format that I'm using is somewhat kind of gleaned off of the format the WWE typically does, where they have maybe two to three headline-type guys. They might have one person or maybe two, depending on who it is, the year and where they're at. Uh, where WrestleMania is, somebody from that area or somebody that was known in that area. You typically, you'll have a tag team or a faction every year. You'll have a female wrestler or manager every year. Um, typically, the WWE tries to get somebody international in there every year, somebody that's black in there every year. It's like their token international and their token black guy. They'll typically try to get a manager in. A celebrity in and now the past two years you've had the warrior award recipients um, first it was kind of the crusher and then Joan London so I'm using that format to kind of talk about who I think will be or could be or should be in this year's Hall of Fame class now I'm sure to the disappointment of many of you <clears throat> I don't have names on there like Owen Hart and Rick Rude and Davey Boy Smith and so on and there's so many others I could throw in there Bam Bam Bigelow and a lot of others um, you know, it's not because I'm slighting them. It's not because I'm forgetting about them. It's just I've been talking about them for so many years. It's almost like if I don't mention that they should be in this year, or this is the year for them to get in, maybe one or two of them do find a way to get in. Kind of a reverse psychology thing, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, here we go. Let me talk about who I think will be, or in some cases should be, or it's a combination of that uh, in this upcoming 2017 WWE Hall of Fame class. In terms of the headliners, uh, the main headliner, I think, will be to the surprise of nobody, and that will be Goldberg. The writing's on the wall with him being featured in the video game, just like they did with Sting when they featured him in the video game. Eventually, that led to him being the headliner for the Hall of Fame class last year. And you look at Goldberg, you're bringing him in, you're having him wrestle against Brock at Survivor Series. Maybe you feel like you can get a Royal Rumble appearance and a WrestleMania match out of him and kind of have a nice little swan song to his career. But, you know, I have no problem with Goldberg being a... Um, headliner for a WWE Hall of Fame class. Now, sure, if you wanted to sit there and do, let's say, The Rock, then you kind of throw that, you know, by the wayside. But I would think you would wait for The Rock until you got into Miami, not when you're in Orlando. It would make seem to make more sense there. 
Um, so Goldberg, who would you have induct him? Maybe The Rock. A way to get uh, multiple uses out of him on that WrestleMania weekend. And I believe these guys are friends going years back. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But, you know, it would be a good way to have somebody big put over somebody big. Uh, in terms of another headliner, I, I really think things point to Diamond Dallas Page going into the Hall of Fame this year. I know his time in WWE wasn't the best, um, and he most certainly contributed some to that. Uh, but I think uh, there's been some mending of the fences in recent years. Um, also, when you talk about some of the work that he has done with DDP Yoga, and helping guys like Jake Roberts and Scott Hall, um, I think that a lot of things point to a guy who spent some time down in Florida when he started off his career. Um, I, I look at DDP, and I think he'll probably uh, get the call this year and should get the call this year. And you get to have a combination of Jake Roberts and or Scott Hall induct him. I mean, so you look at it, the guy's getting inducted, so far pretty big, and then the inductors are huge. <laughs> you know, in some ways, they overshadow the guys that are being inducted. It's kind of funny how that works. Now, my third headliner, and I'm serious, I was already thinking about him for this year before anything else was said or reported or anything else, but... You want to talk about a combination of getting a big guy um, and also getting somebody to fulfill kind of the international obligation like I think he had last year with Stan Hansen. I look at Vader. It's time. It's Vader time, and it's long past time for Vader to get his time in the WWE Hall of Fame. It always pisses me off when I go back and think about it, you know, the fact that Vader was this huge star in WCW, monster star in Japan, and he comes to the WWE and Shawn Michaels and others just conspired to bury the fucking guy. Now, maybe Leon didn't do himself some favors with certain people in political positions within the company, and that could be. But here was a guy, huge, massive star that you could have brought in and done really big business with guys like The Undertaker, uh, Mankind, Kane, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, and so many guys. I think about the feuds that Vader could have had. And some of those feuds could have potentially been a license to print real tangible money for the WWE, and it was just never came to be. And, you know, with Vader talking about uh, his current condition and what time he may or may not have left, you know, it's one of these things where I hope the WWE learns from some of the lessons of the past to where you have some of these guys that passed away before they got inducted and it shouldn't have been like that. See, the Macho Man is one very notable example. Um... You know, you think about how nice it was to be able to see the warrior get his moment before he ultimately passed immediately after that WrestleMania weekend. I mean, that was incredible. It's so much different when the guy is actually there. So, to me, the WWE should be doing everything they can to give Vader his moment in the sun that he deserves uh, this year down in Orlando. In terms of the Florida person, there, there's a lot of great names from the old Eddie Graham territory back in the championship wrestling of Florida days. Uh, the name I went with here was Kevin Sullivan. And again, there are a lot of different names that I could have went with, and I went back and forth with a lot of them. But I went with Kevin Sullivan here, a guy who was a star down in Florida and other territories, You know, even going back to the uh, Crockett promotion days when he was uh, bringing out the Varsity Club, a guy that was influential behind the scenes for many years as a booker down in WCW. Uh, you know, maybe have somebody like Bray Wyatt induct him. I don't know. Maybe that makes some sense. You know, his dad was a part of the Varsity Club. I'm just saying, look how I brought that shit full circle, huh? Huh? There you go. But Kevin Sullivan, why not? Why not? Let the Chris Benoit defenders go to town on me in the comments section. In terms of the tag teams, I've heard a lot of buzz about the Dudley boys. And I suppose if you're going to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, so be it. Um, but I, I'll put the nasty boys in this year. Have the Dudley boys induct them, for Christ's sakes. You, know, you can always go back to the Dudley boys later. You know, Especially if you get have a WrestleMania again in New York or Philadelphia, somewhere like that. That'd probably be a really good fit and a really good place and time to do it. I don't know if it makes a ton of sense in Florida, although it's the Dudleys, one of the greatest tag teams of all time, so you probably do it anywhere. But in this particular case, get some guys with some Florida ties again. I uh, worked into the mix, so I'll go with the Nasty Boys. In terms of the female, I've heard a lot of talk. I've seen a lot of talk about Mickey James. Now uh, She's back in the fold with the company down at NXT, and that surely is possible. And I won't have any great gripes or complaints if she's the, the female inductee. Although I think it's kind of ridiculous that this company would only have one female inductee because they, they could in a year 
when you talk about Divas Revolution and empowering the women in your company, the female performers, why couldn't you have two? And this would be a good year that would set up potentially to have two of them. But we'll probably only get one. Um, no problem if it was Mickey James. I know a lot of people are going to point to China, and I most certainly would not have a problem with China. In fact, I would prefer China over Mickey James at this point in time, although unfortunately China wouldn't be there. Um, but again, based off of circumstances and situations and personal shit, China's legacy in a lot of ways has gotten buried. And the WWE has a tendency to do this with certain people that fall out of their good graces. They advance certain narratives that are not entirely true. And they become kind of the accepted standard and belief. Same thing happened with Ultimate Warriors, kind of what happened with China in a way, for different reasons, but ultimately the same type of result. And it's frustrating and it's ridiculous because everybody knows better. So why are we trying to perpetuate this lie? But for me, and this will probably be the case every year until it actually happens, uh, the, the woman that I want to see inducted in this year's class is going to be Luna Vashon. You know, and Luna is one of those individuals that it frustrates me in some ways because some fans know and they know how good of a talent she was and how much of a quality manager she was and in particular how she got more out of everybody that she worked with guys like Bad Bad Bigelow and Goldust you know she she in some cases took people to another level which is what a manager is ultimately supposed to do and she was just a really good talent for the business had a really good mind for the business and unfortunately she's no longer with us but I'd love to see her get her spotlight and it frustrates me that she isn't already in the WWE Hall of Fame. Because I put that slut bag Sonny in there, but they won't put Luna in there? And come on, man. You know, I realize Luna had her demons and she didn't go out in the best fashion. But she deserves this moment. And you could have Gangrel induct her. You could sit there and have Goldust induct her. I don't care who you have induct her. Just put Luna Vashon in the damn Hall of Fame. And every year, it will be one of the ones that I rally about the most. Because she most certainly deserves it. In terms of the manager, you know, when we're talking about Florida, the obvious choice, the obvious choice is Playboy Gary Hart. Like, it's not even close. And I truly hope it is him. Because it should be. Gary Hart's one of the more criminally underrated managers in the history of professional wrestling. And hopefully at some point in time he'll get some due. So that way, if anything, it could serve as a reminder or potentially a first exposure for many people on the WWE Network to realize just how good and influential Gary Hart was, both as a manager and as a creative mind, as a booker, especially down in WCCW in the Von Erichs territory. Uh, I, I, WWE has this weird thing where, like for me, if they gave me Luna Vashon, they're probably not going to give me Playboy, Playboy Gary Hart too because they don't want to have too many dead people get inducted. I get it and I understand it. Dead people don't draw. Unless you're like Dino Bravo, then you didn't draw when you were alive either. Hey! But they don't want to sit there and make the occasion too morbid, and I get that. Uh, but in terms of managers, go ahead and put Teddy Long in. I'm perfectly fine with that too. This is a guy that worked his way up from being a referee to becoming a manager and a pretty effective one, and a guy that we like to knock a lot for his time as SmackDown GM and everything else. But, you know, it, Teddy Long was cool shit. He was good shit, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for that dude, so I would have no problem with him getting in, although, again, I'd much rather prefer Playboy Gary Hart. I doubt that'll happen, though. But Teddy Long is a very distinct and real possibility. I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen. I think the celebrity inductee this year is a slam dunk. You're in Orlando. It's got to be Shaq. You're probably setting up to Big Show and Shaq at WrestleMania 33. You're in Orlando where Shaq started his Hall of Fame career. It's got to be Shaq. There really is no other option. And especially when you talk about people to induct him, like Teddy Long, I might have Ron Simmons induct him. It'd be nice to get a fucking... Uh, Butch Reed sighting out of it, but oh man, Teddy Long could go in as long as we get Psycho Sid to do something, anything, just even to make up an appearance, please. Uh, but in terms of Shaq, could you imagine Charles Barkley being the one to induct him? That is the antithesis of terrible. The antithesis, again, I say, of terrible. What a fucking awesome. Some train wreck moment that would fucking be. But you again, you're talking about strategies and this is a work. The Hall of Fame is and it's about exposure. It's about, you know, maximizing on returns and 
uh, getting eyeballs on the product. Well, Shaq is going to get some additional eyeballs on the product because now you can sit there in the weeks leading up to it and the weeks after with Shaq having that match, you can be talking about it every Tuesday, Thursday night, NBA on TNT. Why would you not do it? So not only should he have a match at WrestleMania 33, he should also be the celebrity inductee into the Hall of Fame for this particular year. In terms of the Warrior Award, I went back and forth with Robin Roberts, Steve Gleason, Leah Still. I suppose there's any number of uh, military veterans that lost arms and legs or both um, in Iraq or Afghanistan. You can go in that direction, too. I wouldn't be surprised if the company did at some point in time. Whether well, it necessarily always fits the spirit of what uh, Jim Helwig's vision was for the Warrior Award, I, I still think it could serve a good purpose. But again, when you're talking about trying to get the right type of exposure for the company, you know, giving it to somebody like Robin Roberts makes a whole lot of sense. So, and, you know, that would be somebody, they did it with Joan London last year. I wouldn't be surprised if it is somebody like Robin Roberts this year. But again, Steve Gleason's been somebody that seems to be in the news a lot for his battle, his brave battle with ALS. Uh, Leah Still, Devin Still's daughter, the former Cincinnati Bengal, her uh, brave battle against uh, cancer. You know, any one of those would be just fine. You know, I, I love the concept and the idea of the Warrior Award. I know some do not, I do. And that's just the way it is. But that's the way I look at it. You know, some of the names that have been overlooked for years and been kept out for years kind of get left by the wayside here. And that's not a slight against them, like I said. I want them to get their own moment in time um, sooner rather than later. And if one or two of them get in this year, I'll feel like it's in part because I didn't make a big push for them to get in this year. I, could, I put the anti-Jeff Hex on them, basically. And that's what got the job done. But I still think you look at it. Goldberg, DDP, Vader, Kevin Sullivan, the Nasty Boys, Luna Vachon, Teddy Long, Shaq, and Robin Roberts. I think that's a pretty solid Hall of Fame class. It wouldn't be the best, but it definitely wouldn't be the worst. It'd be a pretty good one. And I think it would make for a really good Friday night Hall of Fame event as part of the WrestleMania weekend. But you're welcome to chime in with your thoughts on my Hall of Fame class and give me your Hall of Fame class and try to stay within the format that I kind of outlined earlier just to keep it somewhat consistent. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys would do for the Hall of Fame class for the WWE in 2017.